Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 17 of the Knowledge Panel. Uh, and this is uh, really the fight of the platforms. We're going to talk about the differences of building websites and presences using things like WordPress versus custom CMSs versus um, uh, versus coding uh, or, or um, some of the pay providers uh, that are out there where you can sort of pay to play uh, as well. So uh, I've got a fantastic panel here as usual. Um, if we can introduce the panel, I'll start with Jono because we're not sure whether his microphone's working perfectly, uh, but it'll, it'll come on in. Jono, how are you? I'm really good. This is nice. It's almost like being back in person, isn't it? It's great. It's oh, well, that. we're going to do that soon as well. So that's going to be great. It's going to be good to see you on Friday. So, uh, Jono, just so that, you know, so everybody apart from me, because, you know, the number of times we've had uh, beers together um, is too many to mention now. But why don't you tell everybody else about who you are, where do you come from? Sure. So I work um, in Special Ops, which is a made-up title at Yoast, which you may have heard of if you played in the WordPress and SEO space. Um, but underneath that, I'm a PHP developer, a web developer. I've been building websites for 20 years, um, starting off in handcrafted HTML all the way through to PHP, WordPress, SQL, etc. Um, I'm a CSS nerd. I'm a web performance nerd. I'm a schema nerd. And WordPress rocks. 20 years he doesn't look old enough it's actually outrageous but i've known him for about 19 of those 20 so you know Sheesh. anyway thanks very much for coming in again jono that's fantastic crystal uh so good to have you here tell us about yourself who are you and where do you come from don't forget to turn the mic off thank you so much um my name is crystal carter i am a senior digital strategist at optic solutions we are a marketing and website business based in the uk in the uh the southwest of the uk and we work with clients um, who are who are using our custom build CMS. We also work with uh, clients who come to us with a website already. So we work with with them for their marketing. And I work with clients using various different CMSs, including including uh, WordPress, including uh, things like Shopify, custom builds, and other things. Um, and I will be uh, I will be fighting the corner for the custom build in this particular discussion. Um, but I'm really pleased to be joined by the other panelists and to discuss all of the the many ways that people can you know make things rock on the internet bro thanks very much for coming in crystal and uh and and uh last but not least uh russ uh tell us about yourself and where do you come from absolutely uh i i'm out here in sunny california uh my name is russ jeffrey i'm the director of platform and uh, product strategy here at duda um i've been at duda for about 10 years and i represent I, I kind of own all of the platform side and also product eco, like product SEO uh, as well. And, cool. you know, here I get to, I get the fun job of defending all of these website building tools out on the market, uh, not just due to, I get, I get to speak to all of them, hopefully. So, yeah. So you're, you're kind of defending the corner of the pay to play market, shall we say, if you like, you know, sure. <laughs> yeah, great. Thanks very much for coming on as well. Uh, and uh, I'm guessing that's not the real, uh, the, not the real sunrise over there. Um, I haven't got you that early in the morning, have I? No. <laughs> and uh, uh, my producer, David, uh, what have I done? What have I missed? Well, um, everything's going swimmingly well. And uh, all I want to say is, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music, make sure you come and join us live next time. Just sign up at theknowledgepanelshow.com. Um, that'll take you to the InLinks website. Sign up there, watch the next show live, and try and interact a little bit as well. It's always great to have a conversation and um, read out um, your own questions, thoughts, as we're um, having a conversation live. Excellent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't think I'm qualified to be the uh, to, to, to talk that much in, in this conversation, but uh, I've got some experience both on the WordPress side and, and obviously InLinks builds its own content and it uses uh, its kind of um, <laughs> SEO video. -ish. Hello. Thanks for the haircut. Yeah. Do you like it, guys? And I've got to, you know. I decided that it was time. It was time to get the shears out, literally. Um, and uh, so, so, um, uh, so I've got this kind of uh, uh, hybrid, I suppose, from Inlinks builds builds its own. But then we have this um, WordPress headless WordPress, actually. And Crystal, before we came on, you talked about that. Maybe we'll dive into that right at the start. Um, uh, you know, talk about talk about the difference between WordPress and headless WordPress. If anyone wants to jump in there, you know, why why would somebody use headless WordPress and what is it? 
In fact, so, Crystal, do you want to go first? So yeah, so this is something that I've seen um, for a couple of clients where essentially the the, the back end is built, the back end is built with a headless a headless um, setup, um, and so the, the for the client from the client's point of view, they're using WordPress, and this has a lot of benefits because if you have a marketing team who are used to using WordPress, but you want some of the functionality or some of the custom customization that um, that a sort of custom build has, then with a headless CMS, you can just you can um, you can use the back end um, that's that's happening makes the developers happy and keeps everything sort of, you know, very, very bespoke. But the front end or, or sorry, the, um, the, the custom, the customer side, um, you know, content management is, is WordPress, which is, which anybody who's worked in marketing for more, for more than a year um, or for any period of time has used a WordPress CMS um, and, you know, knows how to post a blog and knows how to make a new page and knows how to do all of that sort of, sort of thing. So it can help you get, get, running and get up and running and sort of avoid some of the some of the mistakes that you might have in the teething problems of, of having it setting up a new website just because everybody knows how to use that framework already but it gives you some of the some of the um you know the the really um you know some of the advanced functionality that you can get with a with a custom build yeah okay but russ i guess doing that is probably going to be um, um you know a bit of a bit of a head headache for somebody you know, it, 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 for a lot of people to set up in the first place, would it? Would it? Would you argue that back? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I think I mean headless solutions are are great when when you need them, but they're going to take a long time to get set up. Right? You're setting up one is the back end CMS, and then two you got to set up the front end, and they need to talk to each other in, in some way, and, and that that's going to be really difficult in, in the first place. And so it's going to require a lot of custom development, a lot of a lot of hands on uh, to go and get that done. Um, tools like that you'll see, like Duda, like uh, Wix, like Weebly, all, all of these existing website building tools, they, they combine the CMS aspect and the design aspect into one thing. So you're literally designing as you're you know, writing your content and fitting it into the site itself, where that's good for like one or two or three pages, but it's not so good for you know, 10, 15, 20 pages, 100 pages on a site that you really do need you know, a bit more a structure when you use a CMS system that's out there. Okay. John, any any observations on CMS versus, you know, uh, what sort of headless versus normal? Uh, just to echo what both these guys said, like um, especially Russ's point on it adds a lot of complexity, right? You're now not building a website, you're now building a back end and a front end and all the connective logic between them, which if you have a super sophisticated team and you want to build a super postmodern website that looks and feels and behaves more like an app that transitions fluidly and has lots of statefulness and widgets and buttons and interactive stuff, then yeah, headless can be great. But quite often, it's uh, it tends to be coupled with JavaScript messes that people make. That said, WordPress land, um, the REST API, really, really powerful, makes this sort of stuff really easy. Things like GraphQL, there's now a semi-official plugin, makes stuff really easy to do that kind of middleware logic. And it wouldn't be a, a Yoast, uh, wouldn't be a webinar about WordPress without talking about Yoast SEO. Just for one brief plug, um, we have a REST API that handles all of the SEO side, like all the metadata, the canonical tags, the XML stuff. You just hit the endpoint, grab it, and plug it in. So, like a lot of the technical problems of this are solved, but the logistical and design problems are really, really hard still. So it sounds to me that you know, uh, headless. headless Headless WordPress actually is, is is already getting yourselves into the custom coding kind of territory anyway, and it's a it it, it almost uh, once you've gone that way, it it, it all, almost makes it uh, sensible to start thinking about a custom CMS as a as, as an alternative to that that approach anyway. So um, is is that is that right, or did I get that wrong? Um if I can jump in there, I think one of the one of the things that I sometimes that that's is sometimes a challenge from an SEO point of view with WordPress. Um, you know, lots of people are very familiar with it. Lots of people know how to use it. Lots of people feel really comfortable adding plugins and adding different different functionalities. But that that's both a, both a benefit and it can sometimes be a hindrance because um, you sort of end up with things being a bit MySpacey, where there's like lots and lots of everything and there's twenty five plugins and people can't remember who added them and what they were for or whether they work or, or if they go together and and so so if you're if you have a team that's very enthusiastic but maybe not not particularly tech savvy or something you can have a situation where you have lots of plugins and nobody know, and nobody knows you know how to assess 
whether a plugin is is a plugin you should get. Like Yoast is a fantastic plugin that it's worth getting, and it's obviously it's maintained and it's looked after and all that sort of stuff. But within the WordPress you know universe, there are tons and tons and tons of plugins, and it's hard to know which one sometimes is one that's one that's useful. Um, one of the things that that sort of custom custom build hybrid sort of CMS does is it means that you have a developer who manages that element. So some of the some of the best WordPress perform like some of the best WordPress sites that I've seen that you know are hitting all of your core web vitals that are getting all of you know the the you know the, all of the good SEO points essentially have like you know one developer <laughs> who's developed the back end and they're using WordPress and they're using Yoast and they're using using you know all the good benefits of web of WordPress but you know the the who who puts in what plugin is completely it's completely like you know. There's a gatekeeper there, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and okay, control. and that's uh, fair enough. And Ammon from the audience has, uh, has has chimed in saying that uh, most important, make sure that there's a genuine business case and raising data for for going headless. Um, is the headless going to be significantly better or a more successful product? I mean, I mean, it's what we've used at Inlinks because is all about you know building internal links and, and goodness knows what but uh i needed a blog because you know and and uh and i, I couldn't i couldn't face having another blog on a subdomain because that's uh that's that's what's what I'm, my world is is used to uh and i wanted my blog at least on the uh you know in linkstick.net forward slash something uh which uh, you know uh, the the argument on the dev side is that creates a, a bit of a, a security challenge that we need to get around and 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 headless um uh, helps to 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 protect that i think because we could end up putting wordpress on a different server i don't quite know how it's all set up but it seems good uh anyway uh russ why don't we go the other end then and say look what are the real advantages oh you can you can come back on that one but my next question is going to be about what are the real advantages of a pay-to-play solution but uh feel free to come back on my, on my point yeah i'll circle back to your, your question here I, I one thing i wanted to just hit on quickly is, is you do see some of the kind of the drag and drop website building platforms trying to integrate kind of the same headless concepts, right? So you see this in Webflow, you see this in Wix's Editor X, you see this in Duda, where they now include a CMS, or often they just call them like a database, where you can manage, you know, a lot of different pages or different rows in a, in a, in a table and plug that into a site and generate a lot of these pages kind of out of the box. So trying to replicate some of that kind of same headless setup, you do see some of these players um, moving in that direction. Now it's still not the full flexibility that you're going to get out of yeah having a developer write the front end and write back end, but they are trying to solve that pain point of managing you know several you know either dozens of pages or hundreds of pages as part of their solution. So you kind of see this kind of mixing of worlds a little bit and taking a lot of these CMS concepts and plugging them into the website building process as well in these website building tools uh, yeah. that's there. And then, um, so I just want to make that, that one point. And yeah. I'm happy no, to jump onto your next question. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. And the, the gen next question was, okay, let's, let's, let's park the, the headless stuff. Cause I dived in there cause we were talking about it right before we started and, the, and it sort of <laughs> seemed a good place to start as good as any, anyway. uh, but, uh, but let's, let's, let's go back to, to, you know, this, the, the pay to play option, which is, you know, there's, there's quite a lot out there. You've mentioned a lot, you've been very kind to, to your competitors out there and, feel free to sing the praises of Duda in the next segment as well. But, you know, what is the real advantage for uh, that decision-making process for choosing a pay-as-you-pay product like Duda? Yeah, I, I, I think it, I think it just comes down to, in, in my opinion, it's, it's time and, and scale, right? When you choose a tool like Duda or, you know, some of the website building platforms that are out there, um, you're choosing something that comes in and tries to make your life easier by solving some of the pain points. So things like hosting and managing, you know, the global CDN of a website or things like being able to edit and design and quickly update a website without needing a developer, uh, things like managing your own SEO settings and moving in and having uh, kind of a bit more ease to update and make those changes on a website. All of those things that are, are things that you're going to get out of tools like Duda and, and other website building platforms where you don't need the technical member to go in and write some CSS or tweak some HTML or dive in. You, you're able to actually go in and just make these edits and amends and build and design a whole site on your own. Um, and so Duda, we, we, we make it as fast as possible to build a site and get that up and running. And we, we do that for agencies and web professionals uh, around the world who use Duda on behalf of their clients. 
Now, I'll, I'll say a little bit of the downsides as well. Um, you know, what, what I would say is, is you're, you're going to lose flexibility. It's as simple as that. Like the, these platforms like Duda, like Wix, you know, we, we make some decisions about how we want to host our servers. And we make some decisions about where we introduce limitations. And we make some decisions about what, it, what can you edit and what can't you edit. And there, there are those things that you, you know, you, you can have problems with. So Duda, we solve that by allowing some custom code and you can write your own JavaScript and work, you know, edit the HTML. But at the same time, there's still things that, that are gonna be there. Right. And the, just w one last thing, and I'll, I'll, I'll pause for a second here. The, the one thing to, to look at also is, is performance. I think you are seeing, um, if you look at the CMS level data right now, you are seeing these website building tools, you know, jump out in front in terms of passing core web vital rates. So Duda, Webflow, Wix, uh, Shopify are all doing very well when it comes to, you know, the percentage of websites passing core web vitals. Whereas, you know, you see a lot of the WordPresses, the, the Joomla's, these guys being lower um, across the board. And obviously that's a per site type of thing, but it, it you do see, because we're able to make a lot of these assumptions, we can also update a lot of the, the existing websites out there and make these improvements on, on an ongoing basis. So uh, thanks, uh, Chris, I was going to ask, or, or, or John, but I can see Crystal sticking her hand up. So I'll, I'll come up to you. My, my next point was going to be, we'll let John speak at some point, but it's, <laughs> but uh, was was how much of a pain point is some of those, you know, decision making pros when you're, you know, Crystal, you're kind of at the, the coding end. How painful is it for you as a as a person that's you know got some coding experience um, to uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, to um, you know put up with the the pain points that a tool um, that makes those decisions for you? So just to caveat, I'm not a coder. <laughs> I okay. work with coders. <laughs> okay. So I work I work with devs, but I am I am I am not a dev. So please please no one ask me dev questions. But um. But yeah, one of the things I would say, like, and I've got a lot of experience with Shopify um, in particular, um, and some of some of, and and I've done I've done a little bit around like Gatsby and things like that. But one of the things that's um, that's good is that like if you have a well built, a well built off the shelf CMS, and particularly I've seen it work really well. I, I used to work with a photographer client, and we bought an off the shelf um, photography a CMS website builder thing and it was optimized for photography websites and that you know Shopify does the same thing it's optimized for e-commerce and so you know they 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 have all of those a lot of technical things that are built in and essentially it's a very well built frame so if you if you if you understand if you understand um you know what you're buying well and you and you know you do the research or whatever you can buy yourself a very very good frame you know like if Shopify has like their their sitemaps and things are all like the sitemaps already already built in and like there's certain certain um, certain parts of the website that are already just built in, and 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 the other thing that that um, that you know something like Duda will give you is that they've got this scope where they where they can say you know this frame we will optimize this frame so that this frame is fast or this frame has um, you know has it has uh, you know so that our whole CDN across our entire network of all websites works well. Um, and so you can you can also get a sort of critical mass like if everybody goes into the Shopify Shopify like theme or everybody goes into the to the work to the Duda um, uh, you know uh, message board and it's like we want this feature. <laughs> If you harangue every, them enough, enough, then you can get a sort of critical mass to sort of get that, get that um, sorted. So that, so that can be useful. But you know, you can get a similar sort of thing with with a custom build, custom build um, uh, thing. It's it also it's also really important to get a good relationship with your with your de developer if you have a custom build to make sure that you could do that and to make sure that they're aware of things that are coming down the pipe. So if you're talking to a developer and you and you as someone are aware that there's like you know like core of vitals or something is coming down the pipe. Google said this is going to be be important in the next few years or so, or the next few months. Then make sure that they're aware of that. Make sure that you know you've got the team behind you that that's you know paying attention to that kind of stuff and can be responsive. Um, so yeah, that's all. That's all I would say. <laughs> so and, and so John, same same kind of thing there. What's you know for you are you, are, you know I know you do some coding. Uh, how how painful is it to take it off the shelf or work with a work with a, an off the shelf system for you? I find I get really frustrated with a lot of SEO where we spend time solving problems that are already solved. 
and WordPress solves so many of these types of problems really comprehensively. And yes, it's not perfect for everyone and there are alternatives. And I think actually to one of Russ's points, um, in fact, both of you, um, one of the places where WordPress really sucks is for unknown unknowns. Like if I'm not an expert, I don't know I need a caching plugin. I don't know I need to set up my hosting. I have no idea what a shard is. And then also for discovery of that, like there's very little curation. So which performance plugin and what, what do all these features mean? How do I know any of this? So you have to know what you don't know, which is difficult. Um, but then the compromise against that, as Russ said, is you get something a bit generic and not particularly tailored to you specifically. And there are constraints and opinions with that. Now, I'm on the fence because constraints are good. It's something that we do a lot of at Yoast. Like there are things we don't provide options for because we don't think that you should be changing them. It's why I'm a big fan of the AMP standard. Um, but all of that will only get you to 80% most of the time. And it's that additional 20% from SEO where you beat your competitors and where you win. And I think given all of that and the various trade-offs, the most important bit is that flexibility. And yes, that means you have to have some dev resource, you have to have some expertise, but again, that's how you compete. If you don't have those resources, how are you gonna beat all the other businesses you're up against in the search engines? Yes, everyone should have a level playing field and be empowered to compete and to publish and to have all the toys and tools, but really there comes a point where you go, I have to say, okay, if I wanna to get to first, I need to resource this, which means you then need to take advantage of all the opportunities. I, I mean, I guess the, that, that plugin a modular approach that that, that WordPress offers um, really becomes a, a double-edged sword for, for for people that that you know the dooders and the wixers of this world just just don't have that problem. You don't end up with this bloat of plugin after plugin after plugin. And, and I think Ammon again came in with a thing about plugins, and, and and the more that you put the plugins into WordPress, um, the the more bloated it becomes, and so it slows down. And you can keep you can keep WordPress fast if you want. But the more that you start to then say, well, today, yesterday, I wanted to keep it fast. Today, I would like to have uh, all my images sort of uh, changing on the fly, uh, you know, uh, or or, um, or suddenly have this streaming option or these uh, the light box or whatever the plugin is of today. As you start adding all those plugins, the chances are that the WordPress person that was putting them in started off using choosing the selection of WordPress because it was just as easy as a pay to play plugin um and uh, and more and more versatile in their their view but as they go and put those plugins in and make it more elaborate they actually start making decisions that they have they're not qualified to make because they don't know about all of those plugins and 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 the effects on the system and the resources and if they did about one plugin it's not the next plugin and the next plugin and just feeding everything in they not only add to a complication, they uh, sort of a more complex uh, website, they add to a learning curve that is way, way beyond one person's capability. Whereas, uh, I guess, Russ, your, your, your argument uh, would be that, you know, by making those decisions for you, you're not going to get into those, those really messy areas, you say, Russ. Absolutely right. We're, we're able to say that, okay, great. You want to use this, you know, Facebook page embed on your site. Duda can go and optimize the way it loads and the way it performs, the way it's optimized for core web vitals, right? Um, we're able to help along those ways and help, you know, kind of uh, optimize and ease those decision points where a lot of those downsides are not really known ahead of time. We can actually limit some of those downsides. Now, I, I will say we, we also do have problems with custom code embeds, right? It's not the same as, you know, a WordPress where it's just a plugin that you're adding. It's people copying and pasting some, you know, JavaScript embed, whether it's Google Tag Manager or some type of thing that's going to load on the page and, and slow it down. You know, we, we have some more problems along those lines. It's less prevalent, I'd say, than, than you know, WordPress world, but we, we still have, you know, similar issues along those lines. I think... You know, I think one of the things that, that you want to look for in when you're choosing a web building platform is you, you want to make sure that you do trust them to set up a lot of these you know, default things out of the box, right? Jonah made, made a good point that WordPress has solved a lot of these SEO problems. And um, I, I think also a lot of the web building platforms have as well. Like a lot of them get the defaults right uh, most of the time. It's when you actually want to dive in and change those defaults is when you run into to problems and you run into the limitations that, that can be really painful, that you can go and change in a WordPress world, but you can't go and change in a, you know, in a website building world. Yeah. Chris, do you want to jump in? 
Yeah, I think, and I think this is where the custom build comes in. Like, I think for for if if I want to start a personal blog about birds or something about you know the birds that I saw at the weekend or something like that, then WordPress is totally fine, and off the shelf builder is totally fine. Even if you're not selling stuff uh, on online, uh, you know, a a a a custom a custom build uh, or sorry, an off the shelf is probably fine. If you're doing some complicated stuff, if you want to have, if you if you genuinely want to have some some like super bespoke functionality like i think there's there's some you know trait and like people that sell sell um you know shoes and trainers and you can like customize the shoes and you can put your face on a on the side of your sneaker and that sort of stuff. if you're planning to do that kind of thing if you're planning to do and if your business has grown to the point where you know you're you want to provide a, a bespoke competitive you know market leading um or or a market differentiated um experience online then you're probably going to need to invest in some dev resource um, and in some tech resource in either in-house or on contract or whatever whatever you need um, so that you're able to resource it. And I think that I think that it's, you know, it's, with all of these things, I always put on my caveat cravat, like it depends, it depends on what you what you need. It depends. So, you know, th there's going to be some places where, yeah, an off the shelf um, and off the shelf is perfect. But but if you are doing something super niche, then you might may very well need some resource. And either way, like whether you're whether you're doing doing off the shelf or whether you're doing WordPress, I think there's some some clients and some people who who approach this thing and they just assume that the internet is free. Oh yeah, I can just get a website for like, you know, I don't know. Oh, they'll they they'll give me a free website. It's like, yeah, but like it's not gonna necessarily be able to, to do the same thing that you know a a complicated website can do. If you think about if you think about Amazon, for instance, the look and feel of Amazon looks pretty much the same from what it looked like 10, 15 years ago. You know, it's a white page, there's a picture, there's some comments and stuff, but the functionality behind that is like leaps and bounds. You know, it's it's a whole it's a whole another level. There's all different interconnect connectivity, um, and you know that's not that's that, and you know that we're competing with 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 you know teams that have that kind of resource. Obviously, yeah, nobody else is Amazon, but Amazon. But um, but I'm just saying like that. You know, they they if you want to if you want to play like you have to genuinely genuinely get involved. Is all is all I'm saying. And you know you can invest on a, in a in a in a in a WordPress site that's really well built. You can invest in it in a in an off the shelf um a system that's really well built you know like there's shopify plus for instance there are you know there are there are um you know other different tiers of like off the shelf um uh, things that are you know particular for certain niches um but you've got to like yeah if you want if you really want to if you really want to like make a splash you've got to actually get involved so, so i uh, my, my my challenge with uh, getting web de de developer resources is one that's haunted me throughout the whole of my life uh, and so i've got to the point now where uh if I, if I need web development resource, then I make sure that that person has more shares in the company than I do, uh, because they're so hard to find. So contracting seems to me to be a challenge. Um, you know, I, 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 I mean, Jono, how how does how does Yoast go about um, developing? You must have that all in house, of course, of course surely. surely. Yeah, we've got um, an army of developers, but I guess that's an aside. The, I guess the interesting point is um, WordPress is such a big ecosystem that there is a lot of development resource. But the challenge is it's a little bit of a Wild West still. It's quite like everybody is a WordPress developer. Uh -huh, yeah. Um, there are increasingly some really good marketplaces which enforce some degree of standards and codification. Uh, the best one that springs to mind is codable.io. It's really, really good for project work, not so good for like open-ended, be part of my business and for hiring. But if you've got, I want to build a thing, if you can specify that reasonably well, you can go into like a marketplace and people will bid for it and they are super sophisticated. They'll do a whole bunch of handholding like, oh, you don't have a staging environment set up? We'll help do that and we'll make sure that nothing breaks and we'll introduce processes and robustness as well. So increasingly that's a solved problem, at least for like, I want to customize my thing. But yeah, we've got um, like 130 odd people on the east side of the Netherlands now, many of which are developers and we just hoover up everything that isn't in Amsterdam. But I, yeah, not everybody can do that scalably. Oh, I've lost your audio, Dixon. Looks like Crystal might have as well. So, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> so, uh, Rob Watts has just come in. Uh, and if you can put that up on the screen again for me, I'm a fan of custom coded, but absolutely get the value to be had from established CMSs. Many people just don't have the chops to build from scratch. And in most cases, it's a rabbit hole. They don't need to venture down. I think that's a fair point, actually. Uh, Chris, Crystal says, as Chris, as Crystal says, 
Oh, I missed it again. <laughs> it's gone off the screen there. <laughs> As Crystal says, uh, and so many SEO types might say, it, it really does depend. Uh, okay, thanks, thanks for the uh, uh, thanks for the, the comment in there, uh, Rob. I think it's true that whole rabbit hole is a is a is an issue with custom coded, isn't it? Because if you get it custom coded, the problem is as soon as you've done that you then want to get something built again. This is why I end up having to have the development in-house and preferably in a house, in-house in and in, in a, at a point where they're never going to leave the project. Because if I, if I have them leave the project, I feel that I'm screwed. You know, I, it's a, it's a, it's a real challenge. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard having that, that uh, custom coded and then expect it to work because good products keep on getting developed so they keep on needing resource uh, and the business models are built around that ongoing need for for, for keeping on resource um i mean do you do you, do you a codex do you kind of rely on that the fact that the customer becomes a trusted you can become a trusted partner of your customers um, you, I mean, oh sorry I mean, you, I, yeah i mean i think what, what we generally find is is that we you know we use we use a lot of open source um uh, uh stuff and so that means that you know that that it's constantly evolving anyway so you know the git is open and and there things are things are evolving and you know people are releasing different packages and things are getting reviewed and we can see what works and what doesn't work and that sort of thing so that's really useful um additionally within because we have because as a team, we've built um, one CMS or another, you know, like I, we have we have some clients who've had the same CMS for years, years and years. And um, and um, and, you know, it it's like we, we remember like one issue or another that's 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 cropped. Oh, that's that thing that's that's from here or that's that thing that, that's from there. And the two, there are people who changed across the team, but the, but like somewhat like but there's a there's a paper trail of that particular to particular thing. And I think that. Um, you know, there's, they, I think that the, because the, the way that the whole, the whole like open source development thing, um, ecosystem has evolved, there's, a, if you, if you, if your CMS, if the, if your custom build CMS is within a certain, a certain framework, then there will, there will be discussions around that framework where you can answer certain questions about it's like, so for instance, like Laravel, for instance, like there are Laravel form forums or Laravel developers or Laravel groups, there's whole, whole sections all around Lar Laravel. So if you have an issue in Laravel, you can look up, how do I fix this in Laravel for Laravel? Um, and then you, and then, you know, you've got, got that sort of thing and you can also custom things. So, you know, we've had it before where we were trying to, where, you know, I, I wanted a certain um, SEO, an SEO optimization and it was new to our team. Cause sometimes in SEO, you're like, we want a new thing. And they're like, what is that? And you're like, mm -hmm. this, this brand new thing that I want. And so, so, you know, I, and so you scour around and you say, well, well, these people have it here and these people have it there and they have it there. And then sometimes you can, you know, reverse engineer and get it to get your website to where you want it to be. So, mm -hmm. um, so as I think I think it's important to know your tool set, whatever your tool set is. Um, and and I think that you get one of the things what I find with WordPress sometimes is that like you might have the developer resource, but like they but like you might not have like the, they just might stop working on the plugin. <laughs> like and yeah. then what? Yeah. Or like one yeah, one team's happens, working yeah. really hard on one plugin and the other team's like they're way behind. Yeah. So they've made seven. I, I think I think it's a big problem two. with a free plugin, isn't it? Because a free plugin, there's no money to invest in the person that's doing the development. So you know. Free plugins, very dangerous things to have, really. And if you're if you're running a business, probably so. No, you got to pay. You got to pay for pay to play somewhere along the line. So no. Okay. Uh, uh, before before I ask the three of you to just give one last um, uh, one last ad for your corners, really. You know, for for, for Duda's corner, for for WordPress's corner, and for and for, for custom CMS's cor custom tool uh, toolkit corner. Uh, let's uh, let's bring back David and and uh, and just find out what's going to be happening on the on, on the next show uh, and make sure that I've got uh, got everything. Uh, that I needed to be uh, to, to needed to put in. Uh, what's happening in the next show, David? Sure, the next show is actually the last show of the year, and that's on Monday, the twentieth of December, four PM GMT, and that will be on what twenty twenty one meant for SEO. So we're going to be looking at you know precisely what had the biggest impact for SEO moving forward in the year twenty twenty one. The Christmas uh, special. Me, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, kind of joining Dixon for that one is um, Evie and Sari from uh, YVA Media, and also Eric Enga from Pilot Holding. Um, sign up for the knowledge panelshow.com to make sure you're part of the live audience for that one. 
Amazing. Okay. So guys, uh, Russ, uh, thanks very much for coming along, but let's, you know, give, give a good plug for Duda now, you know, uh, cause you know, we're in the UK, so there's slightly less of us know it than, you know, than something like, you know, maybe Wix or something, but, uh, but you know, uh, the pay to play sing its praises and Duda's in specially. Uh, absolutely. Happy to. Uh, the, the biggest thing you guys are, are going to get out of a, a, a pay to play or, you know, a website building platform is the time it takes to set up and get a site live. Right? We see that sites take half the time, if not a third of the time, to actually go from I'm starting to publishing and I'm live and, and I'm active. And that is going to be the biggest benefit that you get out of any of these platforms is just the speed of operation and the, the less overhead that's required to manage and maintain in the long run for any of these. I also and, do and think that more... Yeah, go, go ahead. Jessica. I was just going to say, you know, uh, what, what pricing does do to start at? Just so, so that people have got a, 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 an idea. Yeah, absolutely. We, we start at 20 bucks a month. Um, the, the cost of sites goes down as you add more uh, sites onto the platform. So if you're scaling your business with Duda and you're running a you know web design agency and you're building tens or hundreds of sites, that cost per site is actually going to go down uh, on an ongoing basis. So we're we're all about trying to just speed up that that site build process. Uh, as well. And of course that includes hosting as well. So uh, it includes so, everything. And, right? and, it's just a flat okay. monthly fee. Yep. And AJ File uh, is singing your praises there and uh, saying "Doodle all the way." I suspect he's uh, on an inside track there. Uh, okay, Jono, what about singing the praises for uh, for, for WordPress there? I'm going to cheat and give you two answers. Um, one is that um, speed to getting a site live is not how you win a market. How you win is getting ahead and staying ahead on quality. Um, and most people's interactions with WordPress are that you log in and you edit some content and isn't as cute. What they don't see is that underneath that is some of the most comprehensive frameworks and APIs you've ever got your hands on. Um, WordPress is a production line, like a conveyor belt in a factory. You plug something in here, you reroute this thing over there, you optimize this thing before that thing. If you want to compete on flexibility and that extra 20%, this is the only toolkit as sophisticated as, it's, as, as it is, the only thing of its type out there that you can use. And then on top of that, the open source angle from Crystal, my word, when I go to sleep at night, employees from Google work on my website for me for free so that it ranks better in Google. You cannot keep up with that. You cannot compete with that. You cannot resource against that and move as fast and as flexibly. All right, powerful right, for powerful. WordPress. And Crystal, uh, you know, uh, sometimes that won't do. Why won't that do? Well, I think with the custom build you get, you get precisely that. You get a custom build that is built bespoke to you and that can help you to compete in the specific ways that you want to compete within your, within your market. Um, sometimes there can be a, a, you know, sometimes there can be um, a cost to, to get involved in the initially, but very often the, the payoffs are, are, can be higher um, overall um, because you're, because if you've got something that's well built and that's custom built, then you are well ahead of your competitors. Amazing, guys. Uh, thank you ever so much for coming on. Just before you go, Crystal, uh, if people want to get hold of you, um, how do they do that? How do they find you on Twitter or website? I am on Twitter. I am uh, Crystal on the web on Twitter. Um, I am at opticsolutions.co.uk on the internet. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter most of the time. So give me a shout if you want to say hello. Excellent. Jono, how do they get hold of you? Uh, at Jono Alderson on Twitter or johnoalderson.com, which if you want a really good example of what a perfect website can look like that took half an hour to build, go check it out. <laughs> and uh, uh, Duda, Russ, how do they get hold of you? Where do they go? Um, I, I work for Duda, so duda.co. You can come visit. I'm also on Twitter, Russ Jeffrey on Twitter as well. Guys, uh, it just, just leaves me to say thank you ever so much. I really do appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, it's been a, a brilliant discussion, uh, as always. And uh, see you, everybody out there on the internet, um, for the next Knowledge Panel Show. Cheers, guys.